Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Aberdeen. Today I'm travelling first class with Scott Rail between Aberdeen and Glasgow Queen Street. Cheapest fare between Aberdeen and Glasgow Queen Street is £8.90 in standard class. Cheapest fare in first class is £48.90. Now that's a difference, a minimum of £40 just to travel first class between the two cities. Two hours and 45 minutes. The question is, is it worth it? Today I'm going to find out. All first class ticket holders can use the new lounge here at Aberdeen. It's only open since the station was refurbished a year or two ago. In fact, this is the only first class lounge on the entire ScotRail network. That's why I'm starting here in Aberdeen. The lounge can also be used by Caledonian sleeper passengers. In fact, while looking at the Caledonian sleeper website, I discovered that there is a shower at the lounge, but they don't include towels. That's actually not included on the ScotRail website, so I'll have to check with them to see if that's in fact the case. Along the way, I've got a 10 point checklist. I'll be giving them points out of 10, and I'll give you a total score at the end of the journey. The lounge here at Aberdeen isn't huge, so using a GoPro inside might be frowned upon, so I'll have to go into stealth mode. The lounge has a buzzer entry system in place, where you show your ticket to a camera to gain access or you can just push the door as it's unlocked. The refreshments were limited to tea, coffee, cans of iron brew and tap water, with crisps and shortbread only to eat. A score, 7.2 out of 10. I gave the overall comfort of the lounge a score of 9 out of 10. There were 24 seats with a range of designs including a sofa. There was also a TV screen showing train departures. The lounge included a workstation location and two large toilets. One included a shower, but sadly no towels. Overall, the lounge scored 38 out of 50, or a rating of 76%, let down by the limited choice of snacks, bottled water or towels for the shower. The ScotRail website says, We've now begun the phased reintroduction of our at-seat hospitality service following the suspension of the service during the pandemic. Several years after lockdown, it's still being used as an excuse. According to the ScotRail website, there's no catering on this train. That's what ScotRail refers to as on-train hospitality. On board, the catering offered was limited to cans of water and shortbread. That was it. Nothing else was available on board, even to buy. A disappointing 2 out of 10. I heard another passenger on the phone also make reference to the lack of food. I couldn't fault the online cleanliness. There were USB and power outlets and the Wi-Fi worked perfectly. Score 10 out of 10.
The toilet was a standard sized toilet, except this one seemed to have a plumbing problem. The floor was soaking wet. A score of 7 out of 10. Unlike some rail operators, there was no dedicated host. The only interaction we had was with a ticket inspector. Score 0 out of 10. In regards to comfort, the seats were of dark brown leather with moulded backs and very corporate in appearance. All first class seats faced each other sharing a table. This reduced the amount of legroom and privacy. With there only being 5 passengers in first class, this wasn't a problem. Score 9 out of 10. The passenger announcement for those passengers travelling onwards for Inverness from Perth. Just make your way, I have spoken to Scott Rail Control and they are going to hold straight to make sure everyone's done with their connection. However, can I please ask that all passengers connect you onto the Inverness train at first? Can you please make your way as fast as you can over to platform 7? Once again, anyone traveling to Inverness, they are going to look to everyone uh, to make sure everyone makes their connection onto that train. But if everyone could please just make their way as quick as possible over to platform 7, and that's for the 1617 Perth to Inverness service. Thank you. The total score of this onboard experience was 37 out of 60 or 62%, let down by the complete lack of snack and drink choice, a dedicated staff member and the wet toilet. And here we are at Glasgow Queen Street. What did I think of Scott Rail's first class experience? Well firstly the Aberdeen Departure Lounge. I gave it 38 points out of 50, which is 76%. Uh, it was let down by the limited choice of snacks, no bottled water, and although they have a shower, they don't give you towels. The only reason why I mention that is because at the Great Western Railway Lounge at Paddington, they have a shower, they also have towels. It can be done, they just choose not to do it, and I think it's all down to saving money. In regards to the onboard experience, I gave it 37 out of 60, which is 62%. It was let down as a result of the lack of catering choice, there was no onboard service, the toilet floor was soaking wet, and I just felt there was more to it than just a place to park your backside. It was down to the bare minimum, and uh, it was a bit disappointing to be honest. So here's a question for you. If you've got two trains, one has a full onboard catering service and the other one doesn't, should you still be charging the same first class supplement for both trains? Because it is more, to, more than just sitting down in a seat, it's about the experience as well, the food, the drink, everything else. What do you think? Anyway guys, please subscribe if you haven't already done so, because there will be more of these. I think the next one might be cross-country, and I think that's going to be a humdinger. So I'll see you next time.